Welcome back, everybody. We got a great song by Cry of Love. This was a hit for them. Not huge, but big enough. Um, it's a great song. It was suggested to me by Hogg, and I checked it out, and I really liked it. He was learning Fly Be Courageous, which came out about the same time, I would say. Um, anyhow, Cry of Love, as I researched it, I found out the guitar player who's playing these leads is oddly freed. And he ended up in the Black Crows a little bit later after their first, maybe second album, and did the tour with Paige, a lucky son of a bitch. Um, but anyhow, uh, which is fantastic licks, uh, well done, great uh, rhythm with melody. So we're going to go through all the little nuances of it. Um, there's a great ending solo. Um, I've got it all figured out. My notes are linked below the video, so click on that, click the little download button, and you can have those to save and follow along with. Um, all right, we're in standard tuning, and we'll get right into it. So for this opening lick, he'll do this during the intro six times, then verse one comes in, and he'll do it for two measures of four each. So a total of eight through the verse before you're into the chorus. But the lick, think of the lick in two parts, and you're not going to get it right away. There's some real technique to this. Um, it's one of those things, you play a B power chord, and then mute everything. Then you're going to hit the fifth string muted, and then the third string, which you're still barring, on the second fret. Then you hit the fourth string and hammer into four. And then hit the uh, third string open again. So let's go from the second half because you can hit a B chord. E. Well, I'll take the whole thing. All right, so. So that B note on the fifth string has to be muted. So it's a real, the technique is more of laying your hand a little bit sideways and let me see if I can show you how I'm doing this uh, all right so now I'm palming just the fifth and sixth string but the rest are open so my my palms just resting on the first two strings Three hammers on that two is almost it's pretty much by itself so as you up pick it you're kind of muting the fourth string so that's really the key to this once you get that down and trust me I didn't get it right away it took me some practice to really not only figure this out, but figure out the technique to play it best. And the more you play it, obviously, you'll catch on. So we're going to do that, like I said, six times in the intro before they come into verse one and they start singing. Verse one will go through it a total of eight times. On the eighth time, what he does is after the hammer on and hit two, he just lets the strings ring. And then goes into the chorus. So that's in my notes, but it again takes a little practice to let that second string ring out. Alright, so that is the main lick of the song. So as we go into the chorus, the chorus starts out with a B chord played with the fourth root. So we'll be on the fourth string at nine, the third string at eleven, and put your pinky down on twelve. You can cover both strings, that's fine, but it's pretty much played the second string. So we're going to hit it, hit it again, and then a little dead string, and then one more time. Alright, so that's the beginning of it. Then we lift up our ring finger and add it back down. So we're kind of playing a melody. Then we 
come add our take our pinky up and add our middle finger on the second string this will be at the tenth fret All right. it's really we're pretty much playing an F uh, sharp minor alright so he's doing some chording for the chorus following the melody with these notes so up to that point then we just lift up, we're going to play reference in E, we'll hit that twice. Then we go back to the 7th fret on the 4th, 3rd, 2nd string for a D reference. Then you'll hear this. So what he does is take his middle finger on the second string you can just start right off here at because you're at seven this will be eight and the third string at nine slide that up to ten and eleven and then just hit the b and g strings at nine and eight and seven and it's really a slide back all right so Again, it's not simple. I mean, there's a little, there's some definite technique to this. So if you if you are familiar with the song and kind of sing the chorus in your head, you can follow right along. So we'll try it together up to that point. One, two, three, four. <laughs> does is he puts his middle finger on the four string at nine slide back to seven then we're going to quickly hit five to seven on the fifth string five on the six slid up to seven all right so with the slide one two three four all right so Let's, that's really the first half of this measure of the chorus. Um, oh, it is the first measure. I'm sorry. All right, let's go through that again. One, two, three, four. Then we do the same thing with our B power chord, all right? We're going to hit it twice, a little dead note, and then again, then lift up to 9, back to 11, and then our 10 and 11. Then we go to 9, hit it twice, just slightly held, and then a third time slid down, because what we're doing is going into the next section of the chorus. All right. So let's do it all together up to that slide down. One, two, three, four. All right, now we start this part. So that part, again, very prominent with the singing. We're going to play a B power chord. Then we're going to hit a little chuck and then come in with a one, two, three chucka. And then hit D and slide up to E. Alright, so we have this so far. Then what we do is use your pinky if you want, or you can use your middle finger. We're going to put our first finger, rather than play an A power chord, we're going to come back to this other part of the A power chord and slide into the A. Alright, I've seen a lot of people do it A flat to A, but I really listened hard and I'm positive he's playing that A. So, one, two, three, four. And then we hit 
get the B. Hold that. You got time to grab a beer, get a drink. The drums and the bass comes in with a nice little lick, and then you're back into the actual lick. All right, so we got the verse, the chorus, one. We're into verse two. Again, he'll do that lick, if you will, eight times. And then we're into chorus uh, two. Chorus two is just like chorus one, except there's always an except, isn't there? At the very end, when he's doing the B lick, he'll go through it three times on the fourth time. When he goes to the A, he slides down to this A. So it'll sound like this. And that leads us into the bridge. So for the bridge, again, it's a little bit intricate, um, but with some practice, it'll all come together. So we're going to come into it. I'll play through it, and then I'll show you what we're doing. I'm going to come through the last part of the chorus. <laughs> stop right there because that was the first measure of the bridge all right so it's an A and then we're gonna hit the B note on the second string open then hammer in from an open fifth string to the second fret and play a B power B chord so we got this kind of hit the bottom half of the chord to a, this would be an E, you can add your pinky if you want, so we got this fourth root E, then we hit that fourth fret, the lower half of a B again, hammer into a B, and then we're going to pull off on the third string from four to two, leading us into an A, and then back around. And then when we hit the B here, we stop basically and go to the second measure. Right? I know it's a lot of notes and what the hell is he doing? It really the tab wasn't far off. It took a little bit of work, but um, the actual tab was really well done. So here's what we have. One, two, three, four. Then we're into the second measure. So take some time, look at my notes, and just Again, I use Riff Station to slow things down without changing pitch. Very helpful. I always have a link below the videos to download it. It's free. There's lots of videos on YouTube how to use it. It is in, in my... It's just indispensable, frankly. So the second half of the bridge will sound familiar. Basically, we're going to be doing our little lick. Not going into the F sharp, but going into an E then seven and some notes that lead us into the solo so i'll play it in a medium speed for you and then show you what we're doing <laughs> that takes us into the solo so basically we're playing that and then we lift up and come back down. Then we go to nine directly. The little chuck and then nine and two more nines. And then a chuck uh with a down up. Then we start a little lead into the lead. So what 
we're doing is sliding in. After we come to 7, we're going to slide into the 3rd string 9, then hit the 4th string 9. Then we come back to the 3rd string at 7 to 6. Alright, and then we end up on 9 twice on the 4th string. A little bit of vibrato, and then from there he's going to take off as a pre-lead end of the bridge with a pull off from 9 to 7 coming uh, that's on the 4th string to the 5th string 9 slid down to 7 hitting 5 and then that's on the 4th 5th string and then hitting 7 on the 6th and we start the lead so all together the last section of the bridge 1 2 3 4 and we're into the lead. After the lead, I'll show you the solo after we go through all the rhythms. So after the lead finishes up, we're into what I'm calling the post-solo tag. It's semi, half, first half measure is a little familiar. We're going to go to a, from the B to an A. That's new. But then we go into the second half, half of the uh, bridge. Or I'm sorry, that's the first half. So it'll sound like this. This is post solo tag. just a quick rather than hitting that beat twice like we did in the bridge we're just going to hit it once then we're into the outro rhythm there's a dead and then you'll hear the drum you know break down and he comes in with but we'll go into that next so this post solo tag is we're playing the first half we're just a B chord do the same thing, move it down a full step for an A chord, same rhythm. Then we move to an A for that bridge part. So then we're into the outro rhythm. Again, it's a real break. They stop everything and then he comes in, you know, I forget what he says. But what we're going to do is our four to five, so four to fifth uh, on the sixth string. <laughs> He'll do an outro solo over that after we go through it, I think, four times. But, um... That takes you out. So, really, that's all the rhythm of the song. We'll go over the solo next. Um, but what we're going to do is start out on the... Third string at 9 and 10 on the second string with two bends. Then he grabs 9 on the second string along with 9 on the third and gives it three bends and releases. Then hits 9 to 7 on both strings. Then he goes to this. So, again, it's real memorable. So what he's doing is hitting 9 on the 4th string, pulled off to 7, hitting 9 on the 5th uh, string, and then coming back to that 7 on the 3rd and 2nd string. Second time he just hits the 7th on the 4th string. 
Then to finish out this first half measure, he'll hit nine on the fifth, slid down to seven and pulled off to five. And end on seven on the um, sixth string. Alright, so slowly, one, two, three, four. comes back to that seventh position we're gonna hit nine with a bend and release and pull off to seven on the third string landing on nine in the fourth back to nine on the third before we hit nine again with a bend up to the two sevens on the second and first string kind of a Chuck Berry thing coming back to seven on the second string to ten bent Catching 10 on the first string to 10 bent again. Alright, that kind of ends the first measure that I've written out. So slowly we have this. One, two, three, four. At that point we're into the second measure I've written out. We're going to hit 7 on the first string, go to 10 on the second, pulled off to 7, landing on the third at 9. Come back to 7 and 10. Then come back, that's on the second string, back to 7 with a hammer on to 10 and pull off, landing on 10, our blue note. Then back to 7 on that second with a pull off from 10. Back to our blue note, 10. Back to 7 on the um, second string. Then we're going to pull off 10, our blue note, to our pentatonic, and then 10, 9, 7. Coming to the 4th string, 9, back to 3rd, 9, and 2nd, 9. Alright, so, a lot of numbers there, I know. Again, having written this out and being able to play with it, you'll be able to get it. But it'll sound like this slowly. 1, 2, 3, 4. Third string seven to nine, and then second string seven hammered on to ten back to seven, landing on the first string at seven, and then ten bent. All right, so we have this. So that's kind of the end of the second measure that I wrote out. All right, for the third measure. So well, we bend it on this D. We're going to move to the second pentatonic position. We'll hit the 10th on the first string, back to 10 on the second, before hitting the first string at 12 bent, and then bent and release and pulled off to 10. Then we come to 12 with a 12 hit, then 12 bend and release, before we go back to 10, 12. And we'll do that twice. for landing on 11 on the third string. So what we have so far, like I said, we're in that second position. I like to just move up to 10. All right, so what we're doing, one, two, three, four. come back second string 10 to 12 and again with 12 hit bent and release and pulled off to 10 before 11 on the third back to 10 All right so then we hit 11 on the third string slid back to 9 pulled off to 11 alright so that's what I wrote out for the third measure so let's go over it again all together one Two, three, four. All right, 
we're into the last measure of the solo. So the very last measure of the solo, we're going to come back to that 7 position. We're going to start out on the 3rd string 9, and then 9 again, bent, release, and pulled off to 7, landing on 9 on the 4th string, before we come back to 7 on the 3rd. 9 pulled off to 7, landing 9 on the 5th. <laughs> come to the two sevens on the third and uh, second string pull off on our fourth string nine to seven landing on nine on the fifth so we have this. then we come to this we're gonna hit ten bent and then seven then nine pulled off to seven then we're gonna come to the first string ten bent then seven and ten pulled off to seven so it's, there's a little rhythm package to this. Alright, so what we have up to that point, one, two, three, four. the second position again we're going to hit 10 to 12 on the second string to the first string 10 hammered on to 12 bent and release and pulled off to 12 landing on 12 on the first I'm sorry second string and sliding off so that's the whole solo let's take that very last measure again together one two three four Let's take that very last measure again together. One, two, three, four. All right, that's a solo. Again, it's it's played very well. It would take a lot of practice with knowing with all the notes how everything goes. The outro solo is very similar. It's going to start out basically all in that seventh position and then move up when we add 12 frets to 7 to 19, 21, and 22. So you'll need a guitar that goes up to 22 like a strap. This telly doesn't and you know I had to figure those notes out on another. I actually use my uh, Richie uh, coats and uh, tally to figure out those notes just because I stretch somewhere else. But anyhow, everything is there in my notes. I really hope this helps everybody. It's been a joy to bring it to you. Enjoy. <laughs>